Hey guys, it's Celestia, and today's video is gonna be a little different than usual, because today I'm here with a guest. I know when I was new to conventions and artist alleys, there were a lot of questions I had about how it actually worked that only the person looking over those applications and running the event could answer. And obviously I was not in a position to harass that person to respond to my many, many inquiries, just as many of you with similar questions might not be. But now I am. So today, I'm gonna harass Bayfar, an Artist Alley coordinator for Odafest, an anime convention in Calgary, Alberta, and get those answers for any of you out there wondering about the nuances of selling your art at those kinds of events. But he's been waiting patiently for me to get the annoying YouTuber intro out of the way, so without further ado, Bayfar, would you mind introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about what you do? Well, hi everybody, I'm Bayfar. I am the Artist Alley coordinator, among many other hats that I wear, for Odafest. I've been a staff for Odafest for, I guess, 10 years now. Oh, I'm old. This is terrible. <laughs> You're ancient. Anyway, I am. <laughs> That's who I am. I don't remember the rest of the questions that were in that question, but we'll go with that. <laughs> no, that works. Okay, thank you. Uh, so for anyone who might be unaware, could you please explain how your job works? Sure, yeah. So my job involves everything from creating the contract information package before the fact, defining and uh, executing the selection process for artists who apply, assigning the tables themselves, collecting the payments, answering any questions, and basically making sure that the artist alley are set up for success. Okay. Now I know every convention has different standards and procedures for how they judge artist alley applications. How does Odafest in particular currently judge those applications? Oh man. Before I get into that, let me tell you the history of how this is gone. <laughs> Please do. I don't, know, I don't know if you were in the Artist Alley circuit yourself when we were doing this the old-fashioned way. The applicants were first come, first served over email, and then you'd have to mail us a check with your, uh, <laughs> with your Artist Alley payment. Oh, that was boy. Really fun. Yeah, no, that doesn't sound irritating at all. Yeah, no. And this was before my time as well. I was in a different section of the organization at that point. Oh, Eventually, okay. Eventually, you know, I came in and I helped them transition from email-based to a web form, and then eventually after I took over our Mist Alley, the novel idea hit me that your chances of getting in shouldn't be determined by the speed of your typing or your internet connection. <laughs> so at that point, you know, we, we switch it over to just being a completely random lottery selection. And it stayed like that for a while, for a number of years, until a couple of years ago when, you know, some artists uh, approached us and told us that, you know, they're not super happy with the random lottery model. And these artists were more so kind of career convention artists who, who make their living based off of, you know, doing the convention circuit. And I can, you know, fully empathize and understand why leaving that up to chance wouldn't be the greatest for them. So we ended up actually gathering some feedback. We have an Artist Alley mailing list. And if you, once our website's back up, it's, it's free to sign up for that mailing list and you can just sign up on the website there. And we use that to, to push out announcements and such. And sometimes I abuse it to, to get feedback. <laughs> and so we were, yeah. <laughs> so we started uh, gathering feedback about, like, hey, well, you know, what would you prefer instead? And most people said either they were happy with lottery or that they wanted a jury based system. And so, you know, for those of you who don't know, a jury based system is basically that we'll take your application, we'll look at your portfolio, and they'll be sent to a panel of folks who will kind of grade it against some kind of criteria. And then those who pass the threshold are the, are the folks who are selected. I personally don't think that a 100% jury system is great. Kind of like how I now understand that a 100% lottery system isn't great. So currently at Odafest, what we do is we have the artist alley split. So we're doing 60% of tables are done by jury, 30% of it is done by lottery, and then 10% by invite. The reason we're doing it this way is we're still a community. We are a grassroots convention. We want to make sure that everybody kind of has a platform to, to showcase their work and to break into, you know, the Artist Alley's circuit. I don't want it to be like an exclusive type situation where it's only, you know, like the, the regulars, quote unquote, right? So we split it that way. And then the 10% by invite, that's not as exclusive as it sounds. Very often we will commission artists to do the yearly artwork for our mascots and such. And sometimes as part of those agreements, we promise those artists tables in our artist alley. So really that 10% is just set aside tables for, for those kinds of situations. And if they're not used up, those tables go into the lottery as well. Now, 2020 was supposed to be the first year that we were gonna do this system and we had gotten all the judging and everything out of the way, but unfortunately, you know, Odafest 2020 didn't happen. So who knows? We might have to revise it again, depending on whether or not I can put together another panel <laughs> for the jury. <laughs> 
Wow, okay, that was such an in-depth answer that I think you answered my next three questions too. <laughs> wow, well, well done, okay. Finally, how many artist applications do you normally accept a year, and what is the average cost of a table? Okay, so normally we have 200 spaces, which we call half tables in our artist alley, but we allow artists to purchase up to two spaces, and in their application they can also mention, like, you know, if for whatever reason they're on that cutoff that I can't give them two spaces, there is a section in the application where you can specify, hey, well, if there aren't two spaces available, I'm okay with just taking a single space as well. Just so you know, you're not shooting yourself in the foot just because you want a bigger space. Generally speaking, uh, we have, based on the system, and a lot of artists do want the double space, so we have anywhere between 100 to 120 artists in the alley each year. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and pricing, so we do around $140 for the one spot, or just double that for the two spots. And I do just want to give some context to that pricing, because I do think that there is some misconceptions about how we price our tables. And I would just like to, you know, make it abundantly clear that we're, we actually don't make money on artists at all like we barely break even with the prices that we charge so it's really just kind of like a, a labor of love we're like we we want artists at our convention we want you there we want you to be able to showcase and celebrate your art and you know we'll do that to the best of our abilities but obviously we can't run a huge significant loss on it either so when we price our tables and when our table prices go up that's almost solely because the price from the venue went up for us okay that's good to know i just wanted to get that out there because i don't think that's something a lot of people know yeah i don't think that's necessarily common for conventions either i think you guys are definitely one of the nicer ones when it comes to that i mean it helps being a not-for-profit as well right yeah of course okay um now with the introduction questions out of the way before i get into my question for you, quite a few viewers have submitted some of their own that I'd like to ask first. So the first handful here are more personal questions, and we'll start there and then move on to the more technical ones. Oh, they're gonna regret this. <laughs> okay, question one. How did you get to your position? Ah, well, I had to kill some- no, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> no, uh, so, like I said, like, back when I, when I first joined Woodfest, part of what I did was I was the, the webmaster for the the convention and I helped them switch over from the email process to the web form process and that kind of gave me more oversight over what was going on because you know I was the one managing the web form and such and eventually the previous quarter just started stepping down and phasing out and I was like the de facto go-to to take it over again. Okay, all right. Question two, what kind of art do you personally like best? Wow, okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big question. Yeah, I don't even know how to answer that. Oh, that's a good question. I like art. It's great. Um, I find myself drawn a lot to art that uses a lot of color. Generally speaking, either that or, funny enough, that the, like almost the polar opposite, which is like a minimalist style art design. I guess the third one would be art that makes use of different media. Like I know we have a regular artist who who, try, who applies every year and usually makes it. Uh, who puts their works on either like sheet metal or glass. Oh, cool. So, yeah, I always find that stuff really interesting. It's always nice to have something, you know, more unique. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what I go after. Definitely. Okay. Um, and last personal question. What made you want to run Artist Alley? And are you an artist yourself? Absolutely not an artist. Uh, the closest <laughs> thing I do to art is that I stream on Twitch. And that's not even art. That's just me playing games. Okay, go follow so... him, guys. Go follow him. <laughs> <laughs> sure. No, don't. It's terrible. It's trash content. But, uh... To answer your question, I'm, I categorize myself as two things. I'm a problem solver, and I like to say that I'm a community builder. So it really just boils down to, I love the idea of, of helping people come together and celebrate each other and celebrate what they love to do. And I like to remove all the barriers that I can between them and doing so. So that's really where my passion is for this. Okay. Nice. All right, let's move on to the more technical questions with a particularly heavy one to start. And that is, with current events and restrictions in mind, what are some extra safety precautions that artists are taking? And does the convention enforce them or is it left to individual discretion? So I've seen artists start putting up plexiglass and, and you know barriers between themselves and their their customers. I've seen, you know, mask wearing is obviously a thing that everybody's been doing lately, which is great. I love to see it, you know, please <laughs> follow. <laughs> local health safety guidance. Uh, at the moment, on the convention side, it's it's kind of a tougher question on that side because at the moment, I don't have a hard or fast answer for that. And that's solely because we're just at the beginning of our planning cycle and we have no idea what the landscape's gonna look like when Odefest happens months from now. 
I do want to make sure people are safe. That's top priority for me. And uh, depending on the situation as time goes on, like we will be enforcing safety measures. I'm not going to leave it, you know, up to individuals. Not that I don't trust folks, but I, it's it's always more effective to have a unified approach. So we just need time to do some research and find out the best way forward for that. Yeah, that's definitely understandable. Okay. Um, the next viewer wants to know what type of criteria you look for in Artist Alley applicants and whether or not you request recommendations or conduct interviews. Man, interviews. Right? I don't, I don't have three weeks to spare on top of my day job to do <laughs> no, um, Okay, so for, for context, I just want to point out that Odafest is not my job. It's not anybody, anybody at Odafest, it's not their job. Nobody's paid to do anything at Odafest. It's all, like, we're all doing this on top of our day jobs, so time is very, very scarce sometimes. So we don't, you know, we don't conduct interviews. We, we don't seek recommendations. Uh, we ask for a portfolio, and we look through the portfolio, particularly for, for the jury system. We only really look through the portfolio for two main reasons. Number one is to curtail plagiarism, because as much as, you know, you as an artist don't want someone else stealing your work we don't want to be a vehicle for that to happen either you know we're not perfect and things might get through but if you report it to us we'll, we'll we'll take a look into it as well if you see something like that happening and the second reason uh before the jury system was a thing it was solely if you were a accepted as an artist i didn't want to put five artists who have very similar styles or very similar pieces right next to each other i thought it would be better for the consumer to to not be overwhelmed like that right that it's you're putting them in direct competition with each other in my eyes it makes a more hostile environment is that backed by science or true i don't know <laughs> i'm always open to feedback but that was kind of my gut feel with it and that was before the jury system now with the jury system the portfolio is actually judged by a, a panel of real artists i like to call them because i'm definitely not one though i am there as well as kind of like the non-artist input <laughs> and we like to be extremely transparent so as part of our artist alley package we actually put the criteria that we judge the jury based applications on and generally speaking it's three categories it's audience relevance creativity and professionalism so the audience relevance portion of it is basically it's a, it's a subjective everything is subjective it's art it's basically do we think the art will sell and it's not a matter of trying to be like is this good or bad art it's a matter of do we legitimately think that you will get a return on your investment if you purchase a table or are you just going to have a terrible experience? Right. And then the the second part of that is, is the artwork accessible? That's kind of just judging based on like how much are you charging for a piece? And is it based on the data we have of our attendees, is it within you know a reasonable range? And generally speaking, we've not seen anybody be incredibly <laughs> outrageous with their prices. And pricing obviously is subjective, you know, or it, it very much depends on how much work went into it and on the individual artist. So it's it's not something that we judge harshly, but it is there. Okay. Uh, creativity, is the artwork unique? You know, is it, a, is it a unique style? Is it in an underrepresented subject matter? I'm literally reading off the rubric right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's kind of what we judge. Or are there are other artists providing very similar content? So it, it, it boiled down to if we have 30 artists who are all selling something extremely similar, then that makes for a bad experience for the attendee. Right, yeah. And so though, I'm not trying to, obviously I'm not trying to punish, you know, you doing what you do, but we do also need to think of, of, of both aspects. It is a balance. Of course, yeah. Yeah. And then the professionalism is basically, you know, did you submit the application properly? Like, did you submit enough samples for us to properly evaluate? Are your samples of work, you know, a high, high enough quality for us to evaluate? And all that really means is, did you send us a high resolution picture? Okay, all right. Wow. Yeah. Sorry, I was just, I was expecting for you to say things I already knew for the viewer's benefit, but I'm learning a lot right now too. <laughs> also, on top of that, we, we actually split between 2D and 3D artwork as well. Oh, cool. Okay, I didn't know that. Huh. Yeah. Wow. Okay, let's see. Surprise. <laughs> Sorry? It's a surprise. <laughs> okay, question six. Is there a specific type of portfolio that you request from applicants? And I'm guessing they probably mean like, do you accept social media accounts as portfolios or do you require applicants to have actual individual websites for portfolios? But I'm also curious as to whether or not them having an actual site rather than just social media impacts their odds. So I can tell you off the bat, it does not impact their odds. Okay. Uh, the type of portfolio that we request, the way we put it is basically we want a representative sample of what you intend to sell. For lack of better tactfulness, I don't care if you're sending me 
a sample of something that you're not going to be bringing to the convention. But basically, it's a big text box. You can post a link to your website, to your, your social media. You can post individual links to, to individual photos of, of your pieces. As long as we can discern that, okay, this artist is trying to sell, you know, like, this kind of stuff and these are this is a sample of what they're trying to sell that's really what we're looking for right okay that makes sense uh this next viewer asks do you prefer applicants who have experience working with conventions or can anyone apply regardless of experience so this question actually took me off guard <laughs> i uh, <laughs> i was like that's never something i even thought of like i don't care if you have experience with conventions our job <laughs> like we don't want to gatekeep you know like if you don't have ex like a we don't ask that question and b if you come forward to me and tell me hey i don't have experience with conventions i'm not going to shut the door on you i'm going to be like well okay come on in let me tell you how this works i'm not going to gatekeep i'm not going to tell you you can't be here just because you've never been here before that's akin to being like it's an entry-level job but you need eight years of experience how does that make sense <laughs> okay i was gonna say wow you're already better than like 90 percent of the job market <laughs> <laughs> Okay, audience question eight is, do you conduct background checks on applicants and are there any negatives that could cause them to be removed from consideration? That's also a question that caught me off guard because it's not something I thought about doing ever. <laughs> um, we have our own internal system of if somebody has been accused of and we find that they have been doing things like plagiarism, copyright infringement, or tracing, then internally, you know, we have a, a system where, you know, at the absolute extreme worst case, we will ban that person from our artist alley. And bans, depending on the severity, aren't indefinite. They're usually a minimum of one year, but they don't have to go on forever. It, it just depends. It's a case by case situation. Okay. Now, but other than that, we don't really do any kind of background check on folks. Okay. So hypothetically speaking, what if someone were on social media canceled for something that is not art related? Like what if there was a scandal? Like would that impact their chances of getting in? Well, given that this has never happened, I, <laughs> yeah. I can't speak from experience, but I can tell you, you know, we, we take our commitments to inclusiveness very seriously. So if they are canceled for something and if it is legitimate, then, you know, we have to deal with that on a, again, on a case by case basis. Obviously that would begin to impact their, their chances of getting in solely because we as OdaFest, and not just Artist Alley, but as an organization, feel extremely responsible to maintain an inclusive environment. And that includes not allowing folks who can potentially be a threat to that into our venue. Right. Okay. That's completely understandable. All right. Ninth question. How much variety do you look for regarding what an artist would have on display at their table? And is there an ideal ratio of prints to other physical merch, like stickers, buttons, and charms that artists should keep in mind? So there's, there's, two, there's two aspects to this. From a getting accepted into the alley standpoint, we don't really consider how much variety you have, provided that what you do have is sufficiently unique. Uh, and that's only on the jury aspect. Obviously, on the lottery aspect, it's, you know, if you get it, you get it. Yeah. Um, now, that being said, from personal experience as a consumer of art, it is nice to see multiple media displayed from an artist. You know, I I can only have so many prints on my walls, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but if I do like an artist and I'd like to support them, then I am more than happy to, you know, buy charms or buy, you know, buttons or buy, you know, anything else that they happen to have. It's, you know, it's, it's just general good business practice to kind of diversify like that, but you don't want to, you don't want to pull the, uh, the cheesecake factory and have your menu be a book. Either. <laughs> That's a personal opinion. Yeah, understandable. Now I just want cheesecake. Why did you do that? Okay. I always want cheesecake. Welcome to my hell. <laughs> okay. Our last viewer wants to know if age is a factor when considering applications, so long as they meet the minimum requirement. No. No. We don't even ask your age. <laughs> oh, okay. What is the minimum requirement? That's also a good question that I've never been asked. It's somewhere <laughs> in this contract that I wrote. But. <laughs> okay. <fair enough. laughs> If I'm being honest, oh, there it is. Okay, I just searched age in my contract. Okay. The, the minimum age is 14 years of age by okay. the date of the convention itself. So as long as you're 14 on the day of, then you are okay. Wow, all right, good to know. Uh, so now that we've covered the audience questions, let me harass you just a little bit longer with a handful of my own, if you don't mind. I suppose. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate your sacrifice. <laughs> you owe me some cheesecake after this. 
Understandable. This first one is kind of a two-part question. Actually, I, I promise the other ones are better. Um, <laughs> okay. So do you try to include artists with a variety of skill levels or do you prioritize uh, those with more professional level work? Which you kind of already answered. Yeah, I wasn't prepared for you to answer that already. <laughs> And in that vein, how often would you say you have to reject an artist exclusively because the quality of their work was too low? So, yeah, I will I'll reiterate just to be clear. Um, on the jury side, we will, and again, that's 60% of our tables, we will be judging based on, you know, professionalism. You know, if you're, it's a good quality work, then yes, you have a higher chance of it getting in. But to mitigate that, that's why the lottery side exists. Right. So if you are an artist who's just breaking in and you are you know, not quite at your peak yet, I guess, for lack of a better term, then you can apply for the jury. And then if you don't get in through the jury, you're automatically entered into the lottery pool. Right. Okay. I actually also remember a funny story of, there was an artist who asked to cancel her table and was willing, so we have a, a really interesting refund policy, but <laughs> she asked to cancel her table and essentially forfeit her refund, maybe three weeks out from the convention, and I asked her why, and she said, well, because my art's not good. <laughs> so I spent the next two weeks building this person up, be like, dude, I saw your art, I saw your application, you're fine, your art looks great, come in, worse, like, you know, you're, you've spent the money anyway, you're willing to sacrifice the refund, you might as well come to see what happens, you need to break into this market somehow, and you just take the information that you get, and, you know, maybe you don't sell as much as you hope you would, maybe you sell more, who knows, whatever it is, it's all information that you can take in, and you can use that information to strategize for next time. No, no experience is a bad experience in my mind. Oh my god, I wish young me had a bay far. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that nice in real life, only to people I'm trying to be professional to. Not <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Second question. What are some common misconceptions that you've heard about artist alleys and how they're run? Uh, so I hear a lot about favoritism, I guess. Yeah. It's an unfortunate thought, but I can see where it comes from. Uh, and kind of in response to that, when we are doing our jury work, I anonymize the art. I anonymize the art where each portfolio is simply a number. They don't know who the artist is. Uh, if, the, if the artwork, the sample has a, a signature or something, I block that out oh, okay. for the jury. And it's just, for, it's my attempt to, to combat favoritism or unconscious bias as much as possible. It's the least we can do, I suppose. Because I, you know, I, I don't want people getting in just because they got in before. I want people getting in, especially on the jury side, based on merit. Right. Okay. That's really cool. I didn't know about that. <laughs> um, all right. Next question is here to harmlessly spill some casual tea. But do you have any artist alley related pet peeves? Like anything from application stuff to day of behavior or whatever else? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so it's funny because this is going to sound a bit weird. My pet peeve is a lack of communication. If you are experiencing, you know, any kind of issues or if you have any questions or if you're upset about something, I want to know about it. I want to know about it because maybe I can fix it. I'm literally the be-all, end-all for Odafest Artist Alley. I can change rules, like especially if you bring one to my attention that doesn't make sense and I just never realized that then I'm more than happy to work with you and, and make it work for you. What what gets me is people who say nothing and then go on to have a terrible experience and then think, oh, Odafest is like such a terrible convention because <laughs> they did X, Y, Z and I am terrible and I'm so upset. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, I could have fixed this in five seconds if you just told me. Oh, you know, no. Like, I, <laughs> it's, and it works out to your benefit, honestly. I've had artists come up to me so... Fun fact, uh, the, we give two weeks for you to, I think it's one week or two weeks after your selector for you to pay. And the reason that I, that time frame is so short is because that I realize that people are lazy and last minute. And I don't mean just artists, I mean people in general. <laughs> and I found out if you give someone a deadline, more often than not, they're going to wait till that deadline before they do the thing. <laughs> so if I move the deadline up, they're just going to do the thing sooner as though, you know, it, it was no big deal. Obviously, there are certain instances where an artist cannot make that deadline. Yeah. You know, either, you know, money is tight that month, they're waiting on a paycheck, you know, maybe they had to spend extra on their kit that month or something, right? Well, I've had a good number of artists email me being like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm so happy I got this, this opportunity. Uh, you know, can I have a little more time to, to pay for the table? Can I, you know, can we work something out? And, you know, the answer is always yes. It's, you know, well, it, it's, like, 
you're human, we're human, everybody's human here. Like, I'm, I'm not a machine. I'm not here to, like, take your money and if you don't pay me your spirit, haha. I want you to be there. I want you to be there and I will do my best for you to be there. But you need to tell me what's going on if something is going on. That's very understandable and generous, honestly. Like, I'm coming from the perspective of a, a young artist who doesn't really know, back then anyway, how this stuff worked. You're making it sound a lot less scary than it was to me back then. So this is nice. Well, this is very heartwarming. Let me also tell you, you know, if you have a question, if you have a request, the worst I can do is say no. At <laughs> least you asked. At least you, you tried, you know? Like, obviously you can't, like, if you if you come to me and you ask, like, hey, I need, like, a rickshaw on the day of for some reason. I'm going to be like, well, I can't do that for you. But now <laughs> you know that I can't do that for you. Maybe you can figure something else out. You have all this time now to, to, to figure that out. Right. Okay. That's I fair. I don't rickshaw was the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> I've said it, so it's there. It's there. It's there. Commit. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> all right. Uh, question number four. Do you have any advice that you'd give to an artist applying for their first table? Do it. Do it now. Um... <laughs> Yeah. Honestly, uh, apply with a friend, you know, like, if you have a friend who's also an artist, we, at least for us, for, for, for Odofest and our convention, we allow you to request to be seated next to someone, and I will try my best to make sure you're seated next to that someone if you request it. Uh, you know, there's, there's clear exceptions that if everybody requests to sit next to someone specific, or if five people are requesting to sit to, sit to the next person, then, then that's mathematically and physically impossible <laughs> but to the best of my ability i will make that happen if if you feel timid um we also believe it or not at uh, your table comes with two badges so you can just come with a friend as a helper uh one thing i would strongly advise is bring a helper because we don't have staff to sit in on your table for you if you need to go to the bathroom or if you need to get food so it's very nice to have someone watching over your table. I do know that some artists who are in situations where they don't have someone else will just ask, you know, the next artist uh, sitting at the table next to them to do so, and you know, they'll do it. Usually, they'll be they'll be nice, they'll be gracious. But generally speaking, you know, if you're a first time artist, maybe come with someone. It could even be a parent; it doesn't really matter. But just have someone there for you. Have someone there to like take care of you or ask questions if they're more experienced. By the way, we also are there, so you can ask us questions. We have a nice big booth at the entrance to the, to the exhibit or hall that you can come and ask us anything. Okay. So feel free to ask questions. Maybe bring some snacks. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> you like to eat, right? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> a pretty... you're trying to make money partially, right? You want to feed yourself. Yeah, it's a pretty universal need. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Seconded, absolutely. There's nothing worse than, like, your first Artist Alley experience, and it's eight hours in, and you just need to pee and eat dinner, and you can do neither of those things. Yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, and my final question is kind of related advice-wise. Is there anything that you would advise artists not to do in Artist Alley, either in their applications or at their tables? You get dick, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just like... <laughs> I don't know how else to put that. Like, just realize that, that I am also a human and I may not be able to respond to you right away and I viscerally abhor entitlement. Yeah. So, <laughs> just, you know, I'm not telling you that you have to be humble, but... But be humble. Be sure to be, <laughs> no, don't be humble. Like, you don't have to be humble, but, like, be kind, you know? You're, you're talking to another human. And not that we've had issues with that. Everyone's been pretty good about that, as a matter of fact. But it's just a matter of common courtesy is fantastic and will get you so far. <laughs> Otherwise, um couple kind of like general things is make sure that your table your displays aren't encroaching on other people's tables it's it's a huge pet peeve of mine when i have to deal with an artist who is who comes to me you know validly saying this other artist's stuff or display is on my space and you know nobody wants to go go through that nobody you know you paid for that space it should be yours to do almost anything you want with yeah so just, you know, be respectful of the people around you. Uh, and really, that's that's all there is to it. Just be respectful. Don't... Oh! I'll tell you one. I'll tell you one that's also a pet peeve of mine. Don't be late. God! <laughs> like, <laughs> there's, there's no more surefire way to annoy me than being late. And the reason behind that is 
that we are still a convention and we like to at least kind of put ourselves forth as a decent show, a semi-professional show, and it looks really bad on us and, you know, by, by relation on you if we open the exhibitor hall and we have a bunch of empty tables with nobody there. So please do your best to, to be on time and if you're going to be late, if, you know, obviously life happens sometimes and there's no control over that. If you're going to be late, let us know. You know, you can email the Artist Alley email. I think at some point I give you someone's phone number that isn't mine in <laughs> when we're, when we're <laughs> like, like when we're a week out of the convention. It's usually Danielle. I'm like, hey, this is Danielle. She doesn't know I'm sending you this picture of her, her face while she's in the middle of eating pizza, but also here's her phone number if you have any questions. <laughs> And the only reason I give her give you her number and not my own is because on the day of I also I'm part of the emergency management team, so I may be in the middle of you know performing something, responding to something medical or something else that I won't be able to answer. But I do want to maintain a line of communication for you if I am indisposed. So that's why I give you uh, someone else's number. I think I've actually received that picture of Danielle eating pizza. <laughs> of course you have. <laughs> I love that picture. It's so it, good. It is beautiful. Very good. Okay. All right. That's all. Thank you so much for talking to me about all this. I really appreciate it. And I think it'll help out a lot of artists that might have been wondering a lot of the things that I know I was when I was starting out. No, thank you so much for having me and listening to me monologue for the past half hour. Well, I mean, that's what we're here for. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys for watching. I know you didn't vote for this video, but I thought you might enjoy it anyway, and I hope that you did. Again, big thanks to Bayfar, and please go check out Odafest as well. They're my favorite convention by far, although I am probably a little biased. And the last shout out goes to my channel members, Celestia Stars. So big thank you to Cafe Soleil and Lotus Dreams Art for supporting me and my channel. If you want to join them and get a bunch of cool perks, please check out my channel memberships. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.